Hey everyone, welcome to an episode in the Rails API series. In this episode right here, I'm going to be showing you guys how to actually do the sign in request uh, when we're trying to like sign in from our React application. So we're going to start off with using Paw. And uh, as if you haven't seen the previous episode on API tools, check that out. I'm going to have the link around here somewhere. Um, so check out the tools that you're going to need. If you already know that, you already have one of those. Great, let's move forward. Um, so yeah, uh, so basically all we really need to do um, is actually make the request. So here I have the sign-in request. And what I'm going to do is do a post request and it's going to go into our create action in our sessions controller. Um, so what we need to do as well is we need to make a um, JSON, uh, you know, send a JSON request. So we're going to do email. And we're going to have Zach at codemy.net. And for the password, uh, we're going to pass in um, just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So right now, this is going to fail because, you know, we have nothing in here. But I just want to show you guys, um, you know, like how you can make a request using one of these tools and then, um, you know, get. So right now, there's no content. Uh, that's because you know, there literally is no content. As you can see here, the parameters are being passed in. Um, and so what we can actually do is use this in order to, um, you know, build authentication logic uh, in our application. So as you can see, that's pretty much how you would make a request. Uh, and then here you would do like, uh, you know, take the password, check it with exist existing user, uh, check if the, you know, use the email to load up the user. So basically that's why we pass in the email or the username uh, is so that we can use that parameter to load up the existing user in the database. And then basically we can um, return the response based on what we find in the database. If the user doesn't exist, we just say, sorry, that email doesn't exist. Um, and if they exist, then we check the password. So all that logic we're going to be developing uh, in this episode right here. So let's get started. Um, so before we do anything, we need to create a sample user first. So I'm going to head over into the console. So I'm going to invoice uh, Rails console. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a user equals user dot create email. Uh, I'm just going to do Zach at codemy.net. Password is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Password confirmation. Uh, so we're going to do all of this, um, you know, in the, we're going to do all of this in the, um, you know, it, as a using the endpoint to create the user as well, but that will come later. And if you're wondering why I'm not doing test driven development, it's because, you know, I don't really want to do testing just yet. Um, but Ideally, the best thing is obviously to do this test-driven style. So where you write the test, whether you're going to submit the email and the password, uh, and then basically you um, you know you write the code to satisfy the test. In this case, uh, since we're all learning, um, you know I will show you guys how to do this like the way that I um, that is easiest to understand, which is we we understand that there is a user. Uh, in the database, and we're going to authenticate with the user. And then once we understand that, then we can move on to doing more complicated stuff. So as you can see here, I just hit enter, uh, and uh, it created the user. So now there's a user in the database. So uh, what we can do is um, we can basically try out some stuff from device. So for example, let's see user, uh, user.valid password. Let's pass in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, we're going to get true. So we can actually use that method right there to check if our user is correct, is, is if the password is correct. So here, if I do something like, uh, you know, some random password, we're going to get false. So um, over here, we can start to actually implement some of the stuff now that we know what we need to do. We need to take the email parameter to load up the user. So we're going to start with user equals uh, user dot where email uh, params email.first. And then what we're going to do is we need to authenticate the user. And if the user authenticate, if it's correct, if it's the correct user, then what we're going to do is we're going to return the user object. And uh, we also need to return something else. But we'll move on to that in a, in a separate episode. So what we're going to do here is if user.valid password params password 
then um, we can do something like head created. Actually, we can do render JSON user dot as JSON. And then we can just do um, only ID and email. And then we can do a status created. And so this will return a 201. Uh, else, so if it's false, then we can return a head unauthorized, something like that. And so basically, um, if the password is valid, then we're going to get the user object. Um, and if not, then basically we're going to return unauthorized. So let's try that out. Uh, we're going to use paw again. And I'm going to send the request. We're going to get 201 created and we get email and uh, the ID and the email. So um, up to this point, uh, you know, so I'm doing all this to illustrate a, a uh, something. So at this point, we're not going to be able to like do anything further because we need to now have some kind of token. So this is where I'm trying to get at is once you authenticate and you check. So like, for example, if I put in here uh, some random password, I do a reload over here. I'm going to get unauthorized. And with unauthorized, then on the client, I'll know, hey, you know, wrong password or whatever. I can display the error to the user. They can correct their action. Um, but if it's the correct password, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I hit uh, reload over here. I'm going to get the user object. Now, ideally, what we really want to do is just return the email and some kind of a, of a token that we can expire. So because, you know, think about it. If we return the token, and this is a unique token that changes, once we give uh, the client the token, they can access our system, right? But if we expire the session, uh, the, sorry, the, the token on our server, then basically that token can no longer access our uh, our server or our, our authenticated resources, uh, if you will. So um, the ideal thing is to have some kind of token that is uh, passed over in the header of their request uh, on every request. If as long as it's authenticated, um, then basically what's going to happen is they have to pass in that authentication token on every request. Uh, and once we have that, we know that this 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 request is authenticated. Basically, that's how token authentication work with APIs. Um, so what we need to do then is we need to uh, install another gem uh, that's going to provide that token authentication functionality. Um, so let me recap before we go ahead. Uh, you know, when I was doing this stuff, it took me a little bit of time to get my head wrapped around all this. So basically what you want to do is you want to send the email and the password. That's step number one. That comes from the form from the client side. Email, password, send it over to the server. The server loads up the user using the email or the username, depending on how you configure a device or, or your server. Um, email and password. Basically, the email loads up the existing user. If it doesn't exist, then basically we return unauthorized uh, or we can return anything. So actually here in the code here, we have to do user um, and dot like that. And so basically, if you haven't seen this syntax before, it's basically user and user dot valid password. And yeah, so basically that's right there is a short form for that. Um, so basically, if we actually found the user, then we return this. Otherwise, we can always return unauthorized. So let's try this out using some like the wrong email. So here I'm going to do is codemy.ndd, for example. Uh, hit enter. It's going to return 401 correct. That's exactly what we're looking for. Um, so basically, what we want to do is take the user email and password uh, load up the user and then take the password and match it in our database. Uh, so device um, valid password method does exactly that. It checks that the password that was sent over from the from the client is correct. And if it's correct, then great, all good. Then we return what we need to return to the client. So that's basically the basic um, you know authentication model. 
And we need the token in order to replace a session that we send over in the cookie, ba- like, you know, in the traditional sense, like where we have a browser-based authentication. Um, now the token needs to get sent over in the header of the request. So basically we give them the token, the client on every request now has to put that token in the header. So now uh, I'm going to install the simple token gem. So I'm going to head over into the simple uh, token device. There's a gem here called simple token authentication. And this guy right here is going to take care of all that token authentication stuff for us. So I'm going to head over into our gem file. And I'm going to put it right underneath device. I'm going to close out the server, do a bundle install. And basically, uh, it's pretty straightforward setup over here. So all we really need to do is uh, add this acts as token authenticatable in our user model. So I'm going to head into the user.rb uh, and add that down here like that. And uh, we need to add this uh, token to our users table, auth uh, authentication token column uh, to our users table. So I'm going to do just that. So I'm going to do um, Rails G migration, add authentication token to users. And we want to use authentication token with a string 30 like that and then uh, unique. So basically, it's uh, unique. It's only going to happen once. If we generate one token, we can't use the same token again. Um, yeah, that's it. And then we're going to do, we're going to check the migration file for good measure. All right, that looks good. So I'm going to run the migration rails db migrate. And that's going to create the token authentication column for us. Now, um, before we go ahead, uh, let me show you something really cool. So I'm going to head over into the console here. I'm going to exit. I'm going to do Rails console. And what I'm going to do is do user equals user dot first. Just to load the user, the, the only user we have. You'll see that the authentication token here is nil. So I'm going to user dot save. It's going to automatically generate the token for us now. So if I do user dot authentication token. Uh, it's going to return us the token that we need to pass in now uh, once the user is authenticated. So to make this episode complete, all we really need to do uh, is return the token along with the user email here. So uh, authentication token. Then basically, once we have the token on the client, then we can use that token on the client side uh, in our header. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that in the React Foundation series is going to be the progression of what we have here. Um, so right here, let's try this out with Paw. I'm going to make that request. Uh, we're getting an error. So uh, because I didn't start the server, so Rails S. And then I'm going to make that request once the server started. There we go. So now we get the token on the client, and we can use that in our client. So if you haven't already signed up to become a member to get uh, access to our ex exclusive content, do that. It's just 9 bucks a month. You get all the amazing content on our site. Um, also, subscribe and like and share our video. You found it helpful. Uh, and with that, I'm going to wrap it up, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.